Hi, Joe Broncato from Air Tanks for Sale, the air gun scientist. Today we're going to talk about how to fill a PCP air gun with various air tanks. The first thing we're going to talk about are the type of air tanks. One of the first uh, tanks people buy and sometimes make the mistake doing is what's called a scuba tank. The problem with a scuba tank, besides the obvious heavy weight, is the fact that they're limited to 3,000 PSI. A lot of these guns today take 3,000 PSI or more. Okay, but even if your gun takes 3,000 PSI, if you have a scuba tank that only does 3,000 PSI and you have an empty air gun, the minute you start draining this tank into the air, empty air gun, its pressure is below 3,000. When they finally meet somewhere at a, a equilibrium, it's going to be below 3,000 on the very first fill. So that means you're going to get less fills each time. You'll never get a 3,000 PSI fill. You'll only get partial fills. That's the major problem with a scuba tank. The other thing is, a scuba tank is made to be what's called neutrally buoyant. What that means is when a uh, scuba diver wears this on his back, he wants to neither float nor sink with this on his back. It needs to just weigh as much as the water does. Well, that's about 45, 55 pounds worth of water right there. So they're not light, and they don't completely fill your tank or your gun, hence the reason they're not popular at all. In fact, rarely ever used. Okay. That's the first one. What's the other kind of tanks we have? Well, these are the carbon fiber tanks we have. This is actually a fiberglass tank, but basically they're all the same in uh, idea. It's a thin aluminum bladder, and then they spin some either carbon fiber or fiberglass. Fiberglass is out of date. They don't make them anymore. But the, fiber, the carbon fiber come in various and sundry sizes. Uh, these are the three most common right here. They're significantly lighter. This weighs nothing, uh, this is pretty light, as is this, okay? They come with what's called a fireman's valve, typically, from the fire department. Uh, these are okay with one issue. Again, they're made for breathing. And they blow a lot of air, and they blow it fast. So you have to be careful. People do use these to fill their tanks, but you've got to be very careful. So what people will do then is they'll get another kind of tank. And that's an air tank made specifically for filling an air gun. And that would be this kind of a tank. Now these carbon fiber tanks, as I said before, are very light because they don't have to be neutrally buoyant, okay? Their job is to just make a fireman breathe. Even though they have an air gun valve on them, originally the bottles themselves were designed for firemen to breathe. Now these, this one's not full, this one is flow air much quicker. I mean, excuse me, these flow air much slower because they're restricted one way. You can fill them up quickly, but when you drain them into your air gun, very slow, okay? Just cracking the valve on those breathing tanks, you can fill a gun up like that or overfill it like that. With this, it takes, we try to make it 10 seconds to fill a marauder from 2,000 to 3,000 PSI. These come with what is called a DIN connector, which brings us to our next topic, the type of valves. Okay, on this type of a tank, the Scooby Yoke, you'd need this kind of a connector. This is a Scooby Yoke, and that's how it got its name. This is kind of like shaped like the yoke that goes on an oxen. A little bit of trivia for you. Okay, so that yoke clamps onto there, and then you let the air out. But you have to be careful. Scuba yoke. Actually, this is called the scuba block. This is called the scuba yoke. This is called a K-valve at times. Okay? So that's that guy. Getting back to the uh, SCBA tank. It has threads on the outside. Okay? You can see them here. And this kind of hose is what you need. This is called an SCBA hose assembly. And this thread's on there. You gotta wait, there you go. That goes on by hand, okay? Always make sure you get a good quality hose with your tank or buy one for your tank. See, now you don't need a wrench. You have a stainless steel bleeder here, stainless steel gauge, stainless steel hand tight, then the stainless steel springs. All of that should be high quality. Um, and then at the end, you're probably going to want a stainless steel foster. 99 out of 100 times, you should have that. 
And that goes to most guns. Which brings us to the other tank, which is our DIN 300 tanks. There we go, here's one. Now these are what we call air gun valves. This particular one is a TJ3 slow flow. That's our valve, that's the one we make. And we're taking out the little adapter here to show you how it works. So this is a DIN 300. Some scuba tanks come like this, but they're not 4500, okay? And they're really heavy. They're, they're about 3,500 PSI. They're usually a DIN 200. 200 for 200 bar. This is DIN 300 for 300 bar. A little extra, 310, good. Okay, so that's what the DIN looks like. It has internal threads. And if you had a scuba tank that had a DIN, you would use this. Now, scuba tanks don't have, like this one, don't have a valve, a gauge, a hose, or anything. So you would need a it has a valve. You would need the gauge, the hose, and a bleeder. On these particular tanks, the bleeder and the gauge is already there. So all you need is a hose. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. We do it this way where we put this adapter, which is a DIN 300, by mail quick disconnect on. Then we just plug in the hose right here. And we always recommend you, bring, uh, you take off the hose when you're not using the tank. Why? Because if you drop the tank and it falls down, the hose gets caught, gets bent. Even with the good stainless steel uh, strain relief, it'll still damage it after a few times. So we tell everybody just unclick it. In addition, the other nice feature is you can now fill it up at, in addition to a scuba shot, with this adapter, it allows you to fill it up at the uh, paintball store. So now just about everywhere you can get it filled. Okay, next on the agenda. So we went over the types of tanks, the type of valves. Let's take a look at the numbers of fills from an air gun you got. Well, we already said that from the scuba shop, or the scuba tanks that are 3,000, you're not going to fill the tank up at all completely on your gun. It'll get to 29 maybe, or 29.50, but it'll never hit 3,000. So by stating that the tank has to be filled on a gun to 3,000, you really don't get any fills, okay? We're going to give it a criteria of, let's pick your typical Marauder over here. Okay, so from the scuba tank, we're saying you're going to get zero. From a tank like this, which is our Tiger size, uh, it's a 72 cubic foot, 410 cubic inch water volume, um, you'll get 47 fills from 2,000 up to 3,000, complete fills. Then after that, you start to get partial fills, 29, 29, 50, just like you're using a scuba tank. So you get 47 complete fills, partials from there on. With something like a great white, you'll get 63. It's 97 cubic feet or 550 cubic inches water volume. Now, how would you fill a gun like this? Okay, well on a gun like a Marauder or similar, some of them have a male quick disconnect. These are the easiest ones. We're gonna show you how you do it. You hook up the hose to there like that, all right? Then this end of the hose clicks right here. There you go. Always make sure that this collar on the quick disconnect is fully forward and fully engaged. Because what will happen, and it's happened to all of us at least once, and you'll never do it again, or you try not to. If it's like that, it'll hit about 2,000 or whatever PSI and then just pop off with the loudest pop you'll ever hear scared the pants off you so don't do that okay let's find out how much air this has well this one says it already has 3,000 PSI in it would have been nice if we started at two but let's find out how you can tell that you heard the click and that's how you heard it when it said click you knew it was it was full okay so the tank is already full Kind of went a little bit past it because we did, okay? Uh, because it was already full. You have to vent it at the bleeder. If you were using a scuba tank, you'd be ble venting it down here with this bleeder. And that's how you fill this type of gun with a quick disconnect on the gun. All right. Another type of gun 
we would try to fill is a gun with a quick disconnect on it, with a male quick. Another type, one, okay. One type of gun that we could fill has a quick disconnect already on the gun. These are the simplest and easiest ones to fill. Okay, so let's get this gun. This is my old trusty Theoden. You won't see these around made anymore, except for by Rapid and they're nowhere. Okay. You connect the hose up to here. Always make sure you pull down the collar. If you don't pull it down the collar and fully engage, when you get to about 2,000 PSI, it's, it'll pop off and scare the pants off you. So always make sure the female quick disconnect is locked in and fully engaged when the collar is down. Not up, like that. Okay? So you push it on and then you, you can either watch it click or you pull it forward. Okay, so let's see where we are in here with this. You'll hear it click. Oh, we left the bleeder open. Got to shut the bleeder. Okay. Did you hear that click? That click showed me where the air was in the tank. Now it's slowly filling it up. We want 3,000. We shut it off. Okay? That's why you want to fill your gun slowly. You don't want to go past it. Now, you will f you're physically unable to pull this off. If you did, it'd pop really loud. The vent has to be opened. Let's the air out. If you were filling it from a scuba tank, this would be the vent. Okay? So that's how we fill a tank that already has a quick disconnect on it. So we vented that. We close the vent for the next time. Next example we're going to show to you. Put that there. That's how we fill that type of gun. The next type of gun we're going to fill has a probe. And for that, we're going to use a little Vulcan here. A lot of these guns are popular now. They've been popular for quite some years. You've got a lot of brands that use what we call a probe. And this is the probe, that, typical probe, that comes with them. They all look alike. They're all completely different. They're so close, you've got to like, have a tag on them to know which one goes to which gun because some of them are so close, you can't tell which one is which. Ooh, that's not smart. Those are three different guns right there. Okay, so when you buy the gun, it will come like this. Make sure you order a male quick disconnect to go on the end of those threads. That will allow you now to click it to the hose that goes to your air tank. Because that's how you want to do it. That's how all guns are most easily filled. So we put a probe on here. Actually, this is the one that we're going to use. This is the, one for the gun. Okay, the probe goes in here. And it's good to sometimes put a little silicone on here just to make it nice. You put that in there, push it in. Same thing. Now it's just like filling the other gun with the quick disconnect on the gun. You put this here, you close the bleeder, you open up the air. That one's full. We fill these higher because these can take more. All right. All these guns are already filled, so they get filled, so they go up fast. What you'll see is when you fill the gun, the needle will go quickly because all you're filling up is the volume in the hose. And then when the pressure in the hose equals the pressure in the tank of the gun, you'll hear a click. And at that point, they'll equalize. And the air will go slowly in because it's a bigger volume now it has to fill. So it's kind of like filling up a glass and then a pool with a hose. The glass fills up quickly. And then once it starts draining into the pool, if it overflowed into the pool, it's going to take a while to fill the pool. Same kind of an idea. Okay? So that's how we fill this. All right. We've got to vent it, which we already did. Pull that out. Lastly, these ones, these type are a little bit different. These are your Firework Bauer, your Steyrs, your Anschutz, similar type guns. Um, typically, you unscrew the tube, okay, which isn't real popular for a lot of people, but that's the way these are. These are a lot of these are what are called 10 meter guns, specifically used for Olympic type shooting 10 meters. You remove the tube. I'm going to put the gun down. Okay. You put on the pr pr proprietary fitting that screws on the end of it. Okay. Then that converts it 
to a DIN 300. Now, typically, you could actually put the DIN 300 right in here, but these are some of them are DIN 200. So some will work, some, some won't. It's always best just to buy one of these, which is our DIN female, stainless steel DIN female by Mail Quick Disconnect. Now what you can do is put this together once and forever, never have to take it apart again. Just screw it together. Now, the next time you want to fill up your air tube, you just plug this into this, screw it in, hook it up to your air hose. So, that's our quick and dirty how to do it. I, thought you enjoy, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video as much as I did doing it. If you have any questions, feel free to call us at 714-907-0067. You can ask for uh, Joe, and I'll be happy to help you out. So, take care, God bless, and have a great week.